Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. If you're looking for Today in L.A. weekend, we've, that show has been preempted, as has been Meet the Press. We're on, though, at the bottom of the hour, it will be NBC Sports special programming. With us is Matthew Allen. He's the new special agent in charge for the Drug Enforcement Administration in the Los Angeles Field Division. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, listen, your line of work is in the news uh, a lot these days, um, in large measure because of, of the fentanyl crisis. Yeah. If, if I understand correctly, by the time this day is over, five more people will have died because of fentanyl abuse in Los Angeles County. Do I have that right? Uh, it's very likely, Colin. Yeah. Um, I, we're, we're looking at about 300 people a day nationwide. So uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I think a lot of people are surprised because they think, why would the cartels want to kill their customers? Because that's what's happening. I think that's a good question. I think it's an honest question. Um, that's been posed to me before, and the best answer that I have for you is that it's not affecting their under under um, you know their their bottom line. It's just not. Um, they're in this for business. Uh, they're in it to make money, um, and they don't care how. They don't care if people get hurt. They don't care if people die. But obviously, it's not enough to where it's affecting their bottom line. Right. So fentanyl is used in hospitals. It, it is, is. It, it is a, a drug that has a positive purpose. It's a Schedule II drug. Right. Uh, why is it being used now? Uh, in 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 such incredible uh, quantities uh, in the shipments from from across the border because it's a synthetic so fentanyl is a synthetic opioid okay and it replicates the effects of other opioids like oxycontin percocet things like that um, that that people seek out you know and, and and often become addicted to and abuse and it's a much cheaper alternative it's a it's a much uh, easier to obtain alternative. Um, so I think that's why we're seeing it. Is it coming? I mean, the president of Mexico, um, uh, Manuel Lopez Obrador, on 60 Minutes last week said, uh, listen, um, you know, it's being manufactured in Mexico. It's being manufactured in the United States. It's being manufactured in Canada. You know, it's not just us. It's, you know, as much he implied that there's as much being manufactured here as as in his country. Is that true? I don't believe that's true. But if what is being manufactured in, in the United States is typically being fa manufactured by Mexican drug cartels. Uh, how are they getting it across the border? Every conceivable way. Every conceivable way. By airplane, by boat, by ports of entry, by walking across. It doesn't matter. It's every conceivable way that you can think how, of. How big a problem is it specifically in, in your field office? It's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. Um, I can tell you right now, um, in, well, the DEA overall seized about 78 million pills of, of fentanyl last year. About 8 million of those were in the Los Angeles area. And these are pills that, that look like, what, bare aspirin, or they, they look like... They replicate anything. They'll, they'll make them look like Percocets. They'll make them look like uh, uh, Oxycontin. You name it. If there's a pres prescription drug out there, they can replicate it and uh, use fentanyl instead of the actual. Right. And so what you folks have said in the past <clears throat> is that it doesn't have to be somebody who's a, a drug addict to get it. There are people that buy... You know, hey, you could be at school. This, this is some Adderall. You want to study tonight? Here, take this. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's part of the problem we're dealing with now, right? Is this, and I'm not trying to minimize, minimize anyone, yeah. but this is not a problem where we're seeing 20-plus year addicts who accidentally go over the line one night. This is a 16-year-old high school girl that twists her ankle at cheerleading practice, and she doesn't feel good, so a friend of hers who may have bought something off of uh, social media gives her what, what looks like a painkiller, and, and she's just dead. That's, that's, actually, that's actually happened. That it has actually right, happened. Right. So the state of Oregon has repealed its law, which uh, essentially um, made, <clears throat> drug, uh, made drug use legal, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, you weren't surprised by that. I'm not surprised by that. Why? <sighs> because I know what drugs do to society. I see the effects every day. It's my business. And um, when that law was passed, I, I anticipated the natural outcome, and it would, be, it would not be good. People like you say, not surprised. You have a drug addiction. Mm -hmm. You are asking people to have dominion over their addiction to seek help. Correct. That doesn't work. That does not work. Um, in the California legislature, there's a fight over how to deal with this crisis. Okay. There's still this, there's an argument that, that says, listen, this is a health crisis. It's not a law enforcement crisis. Do you believe that? Well, I think there's a role for both. I think that this problem is, is so monumental that we're, we're not necessarily going to arrest our way out of it, but we're also not going to find our way out of it just just through public health concerns. Right. Well, you're a DEA guy, so you would, you know, some would say I'd expect him to say that. What are the benefits to arresting people for this? 
Uh, well, I mean, there's there's multiple benefits. Hey, you, you, you're you just holding people accountable to begin with. I mean, we have to have that in our society, do we not? You know, you mentioned something a minute ago, like the, the war on drugs, right? That's not a DEA thing. You probably have never heard the DEA talk about the war on drugs. I mean, that was Richard Nixon, right? Um, I see it more as, I mean, is there a war on murder? Is there a war on rape? Right? It's it's To me, it's the same thing. We're just combating an evil that exists in society, and and we will continue to do that. And holding people accountable for those actions is part of that. How much of this problem is focused in the homeless community in places like Los Angeles? Especially in Los Angeles, there's a lot of it. There's a there's a there's a like twenty percent, thirty percent of the overall problem. Yeah, oh, that would be a really tough call to make, to be honest with you. But I, what I can say is that within the homeless community, I would say you're. I mean, you're. Over ninety percent. I mean, uh, I mean, just of the of how many people are using illicit drugs in the homeless community. I would say it's incredibly high. And how tough is it for them to get help? Uh, let, let me put it this way: uh, advocates for reform okay. say that um, right now getting off the street is voluntary. Okay. That uh, we we just attended, for example, the building of a new development, low-income housing for the homeless, mm -hmm. and then they have wraparound services. So the idea, and we're going to talk to an, an attorney about this in the next segment, the idea is housing first, get the drug addict, find him a place to live, okay. and then once he's settled or she's settled, then you have the wraparound services, you entice them into getting help for their addiction. Do you think that works? I hope it works. Is there any evidence that it works? I, I haven't studied it, to be quite right, honest right, with you, right, so right, right. I can't I mean, really answer that is question. Is it a but... matter of shelter, or is it a matter of, listen, if they're drug-addicted, they're drug-addicted. They don't have uh, the ability, frequently, right. to seek help unless they're forced to, and that's where enforcement comes from. That There's there's definitely that side of it for enforcement. I think taking people off the street, um, you know, uh, puts them out of the atmosphere where they have it available to them. Um, but that being said, again, this is, you know, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. We don't target addicts, right? So we target traffickers. We target the people who are, who are building the addicts. Right. Um, when, you go, when you go to work uh, on Monday, what is the first thing um, on your, uh, what, what is the first thing that you think of when you go to work every day at DEA uh, and when it comes to this fight against fentanyl? The victims. And I'll tell you why, because when I walk into my office, we have a screen with perpetually changing photographs of the people who have died from the result of fentanyl, from fentanyl poisonings, we call it. And they, and they vary in age from 45 all the way to, to 13. And I see those faces every single day I walk in my office. I see them when I walk out for coffee and come back. I see them all the time. And it's it's a problem that's so monumental. It's touched everybody. I mean, it's touched my family. It's touched my wife's family. It's, it's everywhere. So it's hard to forget. And, and I don't want to forget, right? We owe that to the victims of this. And, and that's truly what they are. A lot of these people that are dying of fentanyl don't even know they're taking fentanyl. I mean, that to me is not an overdose. That's a poisoning. Yeah. Matthew Allen is the special agent in charge for the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration. He yes, is sir. the Los Angeles field office. Thank you.